In this tutorial, I'll be covering the basics of asset customization with procedural objects. This video applies to anyone who wants a more fine level of control over how their city looks. Whether your goal is aesthetics, recreating real life, or just trying to create something unique, this tutorial will help you learn everything you need to know to get started, including creating corner buildings and building more complex composites. There are three easy ways to convert an asset into a procedural object. The first is to select it with move it and then use the command shift plus P. Shift P will also convert an asset into a procedural object if you haven't placed it yet. The final way is while holding a new asset before placing it, find the procedural objects button and click it when it says convert to PO. Keep in mind that when you convert an asset to procedural objects, any props on the building will disappear. Some assets and buildings have sub-buildings. You'll notice this when you convert it to a procedural object, some of it will disappear. The workaround for this is to convert it to a procedural object before placing it on the ground. You can do this by pressing the command Shift P, or clicking the procedural objects button when it says convert to PO. This office building by Yenzer also has a sub-building. You'll see this when converting to PO. Again, to keep the entire building intact, Use Shift P or the Procedural Objects button before placing the asset. Once you place a procedural object, you can click the plus button to open up the menu. Once you're in the menu, you can click the button that says Edit to open the General tool. Once you enter the General tool, you can easily move the asset in 3D space by dragging on the red, green, and blue bars. Next, you can enter the Rotation tool by clicking the round arrow in the middle. In the rotation tool, you can use the blue, red, and green circles to rotate the object in 3D space. Finally, on the far right, the scale tool allows you to stretch and scale the object by once again dragging on the red, green, and blue bars. Alternatively, you can also scale the entire object up and down by using the page up and page down keys. Going back to the position tool on the far left, you can use this shortcut to easily duplicate items on a 3D plane. Going back to the main object menu, if you click more, you'll get helpful options like align heights, which allows you to align the height of any procedural object to any other procedural object. Align rotations can be found in the same menu, and this also works completely on a 3D plane. So no matter which way it's rotated, you can replicate it with other assets by using this tool. Another useful tool in the more options menu is snap to ground. This tool allows you to select any object and align it to the terrain height. Going back to the duplicate shortcut that I showed off earlier, by holding control and dragging an object with the position tool, you can easily create objects like fences, as procedural objects will remember the last distance that you dragged the object. You'll see a pop-up that says repeat previous movement as it snaps into place. The Resize tool on the far right of the General tool is also great to stretch and transform buildings into completely new buildings. Procedural Objects also allows you to customize the color of assets. A simple color map is provided at the bottom of the plus menu allowing you to change the color of objects based on their color map. Some assets, like these homes from Bungalow Man, have a color map and don't allow you to color certain parts of the asset. To get around this, you can use the text customization tool in procedural objects to add color manually. Just click where it says add color rectangle and add your rectangle to the color map. You can see a preview of the color map in the box on the top left. Use the rectangles to cover up the parts of the asset you want to accordingly. Some assets you'll notice won't have a color map at all, but that's okay with procedural objects. Using the text customization tool, you can still color them however you want. Just like with the house I showed off earlier, use the colored rectangles to cover parts of the asset that you want to color. Be mindful not to cover parts like windows and doors, as they will be painted in-game. Lastly, the text customization tool is also great if you're just trying to color a specific part of the asset. For this warehouse, I'm just trying to make the roof blue, so I drag the rectangle over only the roof part of the asset. Next, I want to wrap a small red line around the entire warehouse. Sometimes you'll notice that assets have different styles of texture mapping. 
you'll notice that it's over the garage door, so I moved a little bit to the left to not cover that part of the texture map. You can also easily add words and your own text to buildings by using the Add Text Field option within the Text Customization tool. Using the provided text box, you can add your own custom words to whatever asset or building of your choice. To move the words around on the asset like you just saw me do, it's as easy as clicking on the letters on the texture map and dragging them around to where you want them to be. The Customize tool is one of the most powerful tools you have within procedural objects for customizing buildings. To enter the Customization tool, click the button at the bottom right corner of the procedural objects menu called Customization. You will now be able to see all the vertices for the model. You can either click on individual vertices or hold the right mouse button and drag to select multiple at a time. Once you've selected the vertices you want, you can edit the building once again on a 3D plane by dragging the vertices in any direction. As you just saw, I hit the columns on the church by moving them inside of the 3D model. You can also use tools from the menu on the left to hide different parts of buildings. You can see now that I'm using the Merge Vertices option to hide the cross. Then you can see I select the rest of the spire and use the Flatten Selection option to hide the rest of it. As you can see, just from using the Customize Vertices option in Procedural Objects, you can take existing assets and create completely new buildings with them. Another example of how powerful the Customize tool is, you can take assets like this specific building by Mac Welshman and completely transform them into new buildings. As you can see, I'm selecting all the vertices in the middle floors, and then I'm using the Flatten Selection tool to transform this building from an 8-story asset to a 3-story asset. Here, I'm using the same techniques on this corner commercial building. As you can see, this tool is really powerful for creating any type of building that you want. Applying your own creativity, you can transform just about any building into anything you can imagine using procedural objects. Here, I have a road at an angle of 30 degrees. I want these assets to line up with the road at the same angle. Normally, this would be impossible. With procedural objects, however, I can use the Customize tool and edit the vertices to rotate them to the road. The Rotate tool will sometimes warp and stretch objects in a weird way, so you may need to grab the corners of buildings and stretch them out to make them look normal again. Once you're finished editing the item to match the angle of the road, it's easy to duplicate the item over using the Position tool and the Control key. The customizations you've made in the customization tool to the vertices will stay as you drag the object over. Here, I complete these same steps on this row house by Chrysler, showing how easy it is to rotate the vertices of items to match angled roads. For good measure, I'll show the technique one more time on this warehouse asset. This technique is easier on buildings that have less overall vertices as there's less chance for things to get warped or for the textures to become broken. Moving on to more advanced techniques now, I'm creating a custom corner building to fit into this 30 degree angle. To add an additional degree of challenge to this building, I've decided to have it be three faces, with a flat face facing towards the corner and each side fitting into the angle of the streets. I take a quick look around the asset to make sure none of the vertices are out of order or sticking out in a weird way. Now it's just a matter of cleaning up the rest of the vertices and hiding them within the building. There's no right or wrong way to hide vertices. The goal is just to make the asset look as good as possible from all angles, so use your creativity to try to hide the vertices or customize the building in a way that looks natural. I feel pretty happy with the results of this building now, so I move it into the corner using the position tool. Here, I'm using some of the same techniques I used on the other corner building to take this condo by smileys and fit it into the corner. 
With some assets, you'll have to do more customization with the vertices than others. And it's usually just down to how many vertices are in the asset itself and how the texture is mapped to the asset. For the final part of the video, I'm going to bring the techniques from the last five parts together to build some more complex and composite buildings. As you just saw, I edit some of the vertices to drag them over and create a more dynamic window shape. Now, I'm using Control and the Position tool to drag the building over and create a few copies of it. As you can see, I use the Snap tool to repeat the previous movement. Now, I'm bringing a copy of the asset up to build a few additional stories in the middle by holding the Control key and using the Position tool. I decide it might look nice to have some additional windows where currently the building is just white. So I drag another copy of the asset up above and collapse the building just to get the windows to place over the white parts of the building. As you can see, I'm using some of the tools from the menu on the left, like Align Vertices, to collapse the building in on itself and hide the vertices behind the windows. Now it's just a matter of dragging into the places that I want to hide the white parts of the building and create some extra windows. Finally, I'm using this warehouse asset by Ivanya to demonstrate how you can take a simple asset and create a more complex one through a composite of the same asset. As you can see, I edited the vertices to collapse it in half and then copy and pasted the asset and rotated it 180 degrees. This allows me to shrink one side of the asset to be a bit smaller than the other half. I then copy both halves of the asset and raise them above so I can start making additions to the roof. I shrink both sides down three times by using the page down key, and then lower them onto the roof of the existing warehouse. To align the heights of the two new additions to the roof of the warehouse, I use the more menu within the plus menu to find align heights and click on the plus of the other warehouse. I then stretch the vertices with the customize tool to match the other side of the warehouse roof. And finally, just to add a little bit more detail and bring everything together, I add some garage door props. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found the information helpful. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy videos like this and want to see more. Also, feel free to check out my Pittsburgh project, a 1-1 recreation of Pittsburgh with new episodes every two weeks.